Clarissa, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Um, first of all, I want to say uh, congratulations on your two-year anniversary. I know that was yesterday. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious, um, how did you and, and your fiance meet? We met at the gym. It was like during like uh, COVID, but we didn't really like, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking about him at the gym. Like when I go to the gym, I train, I work out. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot of good looking guys at the gym. <laughs> <laughs> but uh I just was like kind of just worried about about my fitness because I had gained quarantine weight like everybody else I was almost 200 pounds so it was like hey we can't get to the to the three digits you know to the 200s so mm -hmm. uh, I just started going to the gym it was a black owned gym a lot was going on with the black lives matter and everything so I wanted to go to a black owned gym and uh, that's where I went to and he's the owner there so uh, he was like the person training me, and I think maybe like a month after a month, I think the whole like at fitness crew, we all went out to this club, and we were all just like, I kicked everybody ass in pool because I played pool real good, <laughs> and um, we were on a team, and that's when we discovered like that it was like a connection or something there, but mm -hmm. we were friends at first. And how much does that help having someone in the fitness industry, you know, kind of supporting you along the way? Does he like join workouts with you? And, and what's what's that feature like in your relationship? Um, You know, I believe in individuality, you know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. even though he's a fitness trainer and gym owner, he does like physique and bodybuilding and, I'm, you know, in boxing and not, and not in the bodybuilding. So he does give me workouts and he knows the body pretty well. And um gives me workouts and stuff so we can kind of like mingle there but it's really like uh we try to keep it separate but it kind of just go together because it's like he's in fitness I'm in boxing they you need fitness to be to be in shape for boxing so I teach him how to pad me up or I pad him up and he gives me like good workouts that I can burn a whole lot of fat and sweat a whole lot and lose weight faster so it all works together but but we both do uh, keep our keep our stuff separate i hear you i have i have to ask you since i've been there myself uh do you guys have a wedding date set <laughs> no um we have a time mm -hmm. so uh not next year wait 2023 but beginning of 2024 gotcha. um we i haven't figured out was going to be like one of those weddings you have to fly to or you know, go to Aruba or Hawaii or something, or it was going to be in Michigan at a big old church with a whole lot of people. I hadn't really decided yet. Got you. Well, congratulations again. I saw that, so I had to give you a shout out on that. Um, mm -hmm. you, you were talking about, too, during the pandemic, um, you know, gaining weight and then getting into the gym. I, I think a lot of people, obviously, I had the same thing where, you know, you don't have a whole lot to do, so trying to stay in shape is that much harder. Was that like the first time that that you, you kind of saw that increase, um, you know, in, in weight and physical fitness because of that? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think doing like quarantine, nobody was really looking in the mirror because mm -hmm. there wasn't a reason to. You're not going out nowhere, you know, you can't do nothing. And a lot of, it, mostly everything was closed. So you would think, you know, because I was still working out every day, mm -hmm. you know, but it's like, you know, working out and, you know, spending most of your time, you know, eating with family, having a good time because the world was shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, when it was going to open back up. And I also didn't have a fight date. So it's just like, it's just free. So I didn't even get on the scale till about three months into COVID. And when I got on the scale, like, like my body still looked good. Mm -hmm. Something like oh, I'm about 175, 170, maybe. I get on the scale and it said 195. It's like, oh shit. Whoa. Yo, how you gonna fight at 54 if you 195? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I also was like, you know, getting getting too big for my clothes and everything. So it just was like, yeah, it's time to get back to the gym, start the hard cardio. I was going to the gym two, three times a day. And I got the weight off pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. I was going to say that. I feel like that's something that, that the majority of people can relate to. I know I can relate to that. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, well, I got to say in 2020, um, 
when you fought Ivana, you, you got down to, to 153, I want to say pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so as far as that, you, you said it came off pretty quickly. Um, since then, has it, has it still been pretty consistent? Like, shoot, if I can, you know, lose that weight in that amount of time, I'm never going to have a weight issue making a, a cut again. Yeah. Well, since I got back down and I was fighting at 54, I also mm-hmm. was doing a at 55, mm-hmm. you know, so I haven't uh, really been over 175 in the past year or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I kind of keep my weight there. I know I'm gonna fight at 60 or I'm gonna fight at 55. So kind of keep my weight 15, 10 pounds in there. I don't like uh, losing, you know, 40 pounds for a fight. Mm-hmm. It's not it, but I've never, I'm, I, but I'm really not that big. I could fight at 47 if I wanted to. You know, I'm actually, I feel like sometimes when I get in there with the girls that was at 68 or 60, I felt like, dang, these girls are way bigger than me. I always <laughs> felt that way when I was getting in, when I was getting inside the ring. Like I got height, but they had size, mm-hmm. you know? What I mean? Speaking of your, your training team, I know, um, you've, you've been working with John David Jackson and, and, um, you know, I know that for a while you were based out of Florida. Are you still going down to Florida to train there? Are you still living part-time in Florida? Of course I'm going down Mm -hmm. to Florida. Mm -hmm. And how is, how is that, uh, how is that experience working with, with the trainer? I know he's not a new trainer. I mean, you've been working with him for a while now, but how is working with John David Jackson kind of changed you as a fighter? Um, John, you know, John, John, John Jackson will tell you that since we got together, um, we already both agreed that I know what I'm doing. I know how to fight. Um, I, I'm not the fighter who needs you to call me in the morning and wake me up for morning runs or tell me to come to practice. Like, I'm going to be there before you sometime and I'm going to work out more than you like, you know, because I'm like a gym rat. So really his knowledge is just like, you know, showing me some of his tricks, you know, him, you know, um, us watching film together and us game planning together, you know, so he didn't teach me how to fight, but he has, you know, added to my game, like the, like the patience, mm-hmm. you know, up my fights, you know, you see these rounds where you like, she's almost out of there. You know, you, I beat Emma Cozen down, you know, when I fought against a lot of girls, I beat them down. It was no, it, it, it was no competition, but I think that the knockouts, it's the mind thing because it's like, okay, calm down and, you know, land the big shots, but it's also having that switch in your mind to like, Hey, okay, we didn't beat her up enough. Now I want you to get her out of here. It's like, I'm just having so much fun in the ring and I'm in such good shape. It doesn't matter if I knock her out in the sixth round or rather I beat her down for 10 rounds. I still feel good about it. Mm-hmm. You know, so he's uh, just been trying to put, in my mind, settle down on the punches and kind of, and trying to convince me that I would, I will feel better with a knockout. And it's like, I, I just feel good winning. So mm-hmm. we, we are making a transition over. I almost knocked out Emma, uh, Emma Cozen a lot in our, in our fight. It's been a few girls, uh, Ivana Habuzin, we almost knocked her out. And it's like almost, 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 but it's like, I dominated. So it's just like, we're just trying to get me to a, uh, settle down, sit on the punches when I, when I got them hurt, re, you know, recognizing when they're, when they're hurt and I just, you know, keeping the power over the rounds, you know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. girls will say that I got power throughout the whole fight, but it's like, I want to, we've been working on getting stronger and getting faster and just being more smart and picking our shots. And I believe that, um, out of my 12 fights, I got two knockouts two undisputed championships or whatever, but this will be the fight where people will see that uh, I am going to knock out Savannah Marshall. Like, I'm going to catch her because she has too many flaws and she doesn't respect my power. So when you don't respect somebody's power, you don't really be paying attention. Mm-hmm. But she does a lot in her game that is going to cause her to get hit and get hit with big shots. So this fight, we're already kind of clicked on to this fight isn't going 10 rounds. It's going to be a knockout. So um, we, we are getting ready to stand our ground, you know, use our combinations, but slow the punches down. It's not going to be, you know, I throw over a hundred punches around. This is going to be a fight to where very, very patient, but also just a uh, very ferocious with the shot. So when you, so, so when you see a shot land, you're going to know that, that it, that, uh, that it hurt, 
you mm-hmm. know, and that, you know, she's going to have to rearrange her whole game plan because if the game plan was to knock me out. Well, you got to be able to withstand that heat before you can even think about knocking me out. And you got to land. And we mm-hmm. all know that I got great defense, you know. So we're working on a lot for this fight. But I think that um she just outmatched. She she's outmatched for this fight, even in even in power. Mm-hmm. Power. Uh, final question for me. I know I'm running low on time here, but I have to ask this because my editor Amy, who's talked to you in the past, wanted to know um, status on MMA and PFL. Are you still under contract, or is that something that you're still looking to do in the future? Yeah, I'm doing a PFL tournament next year. Mm-hmm. Well, the the PFL season. Mm-hmm. And I have an MMA fight at the end of the year. That's why this fight being in being in September uh, was really a no go for me because I wanted to spend that time getting ready for my MMA fight at, at, at the end of the year. But um, just with timing and everything, I guess it has to be in September. But I will be doing doing a, a MMA fight toward the end of the year after after I get this win in September. No doubt. Well. Clarissa, you're impressive in, in every facet of combat, whether it's in a, a cage or in a boxing ring. Um, you're doing it all. So thank you so much for your time and best of luck against Savannah. Thank you. Appreciate that.